when it comes to the which is worse war between bedbugs and cockroaches, there are no winners here. Both can spell bad news, especially if a full-blown infestation is underway. While cockroaches are much larger, can fly, and can often emerge in plain sight, bedbugs bite rather frequently in an effort to feed on blood, most often your blood. With those key differences in play, the battle that you'll have to face when dealing with either is rather similar. They are equally awful, just in different ways. In this video, we will detail the challenges of potentially having both bedbugs and cockroaches invade your home, how they feed, which is worse, and how to get rid of these problem pests and squash out an infestation. FYI, as a bit of an advanced warning, this video will contain up-close footage of a cockroach. Although used for educational purposes, consider this an advanced warning. Yep, as the creator of this video, even I will admit, it's some rather nasty stuff. Enjoy the video. We hope you find it informative. Bed bugs and cockroaches can coexist in the same living space. This is certainly a situation you do not want to find yourself in. Because bed bugs and cockroaches are quite different, these general differences mean you can have both problems at the same time. There are three primary reasons why bed bugs and cockroaches can coexist, and they are as follows. Number one, they reside in different places. Bed bugs live near your bed and surrounding areas. Cockroaches, on the other hand, take up residence in your kitchen or around trash. If you have garbage in your kitchen or nasty and rotten food on your floor, this is an ideal living space for cockroaches. Number two, while both bed bugs and cockroaches thrive on poor hygiene, the overall reasons are a bit different. Bed bugs live on dirty and unkept bedding, a generally dirty and quote unquote dirty clothing pile filled environment. Cockroaches, as noted, feed on garbage and the unclean, the stereotypical example of a mess. Residing mostly around food and filth, cockroaches want nothing to do with your dirty bed, but more to do with your weekly kitchen trash. And finally, number three, Bed bugs and cockroaches are not in competition. In fact, their paths may never cross in some home settings. Bed bugs on your matches and roaches in your kitchen. In this regard, they have nothing in common which can spell bad news for you. Because they're not in competition for the same food or general living space, they can both multiply without getting in the way of each other. There are many ways that one type of bug can be worse than the other. The main issues are their bites, how difficult they are to eliminate, and how fast they come back. Let's take a deep dive into this issue and break down some of the differences and similarities when it comes to the critical subtopics that are likely very important to you. Number one, bite frequency. While bed bugs are known for their bites, thus the core reason they are viewed as a major issue, Cockroaches rarely bite. While bed bugs feed off people and leave behind red, itchy, and swollen marks in their wake, cockroaches feast on traditional food, not blood. A cockroach will only bite you if you're the very last option. When it comes to biting, bed bugs are the main issue, not cockroaches. Number two, bite reaction. How does your body respond to bites? What do they feel like? What do they look like? When it comes to bed bugs, you're likely not going to feel a thing. Bed bugs use a chemical compound that numbs the bite. This is for their protection. They can bite you while seemingly going undetected. In the aftermath, you're left with small bites that will turn red and swell. The area will eventually begin to itch. Cockroaches, on the other hand, can pack a punch in respect to what you feel. This sensation is instant and the bite will swell. Both bed bugs and cockroach bites can become infective. This usually occurs if you scratch the area. Number three. Size. When it comes to the visual aspect, bed bugs and cockroaches couldn't be more different. Bed bugs are generally the size of an apple seed and are brown in color. They can certainly be seen with the naked eye, but they're quite small. Cockroaches, on the other hand, are much larger, over an inch and a half on average. Cockroaches are also much wider, around one inch in width. It's impossible to mistake one for the other. In terms of which bug is quote unquote worse, as it relates to how you can handle and treat the situation, bed bugs can be much worse simply because they're smaller. Cockroaches can be elusive, but their size can certainly 
give them away. And speaking of elusive, that brings us to our fourth point. The ability to hide and stay out of view. Both bed bugs and cockroaches will try to avoid you if they know you're awake, up, and about. They do this by hiding under things. Bed bugs under your mattress and cockroaches under trash, your refrigerator, etc. This poses a question. What if you were to go on the offensive and attempt to snuff them out and kill them? Will they attack? Well, bed bugs lack any means to attack. They can only play the role they play, regardless of your actions. Cockroaches, on the other hand, do possess a marginal defense. They can nip at you, and they can also run away when you attempt to come at them. Their defense is in their speed. Cockroaches often survive an attack by leaving the hiding area that's being snuffed out and running to a new location before the person can kill them. Number five, nocturnal or not. As we briefly noted, bed bugs and cockroaches love to hide. That's why, at least generally speaking, you don't see them around too much in the middle of a sunny day when you're walking through your home, making noise, and just living life. So, does that mean they're nocturnal? Yes, both bed bugs and cockroaches are nocturnal. They feed at night and keep it low in the day. This is for both their protection and digestion, especially for bed bugs, as digestion, mating, laying eggs are all done during the day. Comparing the two, cockroaches are more likely to be seen during the day if they're forced out. Knowing they can avoid you with their speed, they will only show themselves during the day if a defense calls for it. Number six, the flying game. Can bedbugs and cockroaches actually fly? While bedbugs can't fly, this wasn't always the case. Their ancestors evolved from bugs that could fly. They simply lost their wings over time. If you examine a bedbug closely in the proper viewing space, you can still see tiny nubs where their wings once connected to their backs. On the other hand, cockroaches can fly. It's quite a sight to behold. It's certainly not something you see every day and not something you expect. Cockroaches don't need to fly, so that's why they rarely do. In most cases, cockroaches only fly as an act of desperation. Number seven, disease. Do bedbugs and cockroaches have disease they can spread from person to person? Although bedbugs are blood suckers, there has been no public health record reports that suggest an individual has ever come down with a major infectious disease that has been attributed to bedbugs. On the contrary, cockroaches can spread disease. They can crawl on food and leave behind bacteria. If you consume the bacteria, you could get dysentery or salmonella, which are both quite serious. Cockroaches also have the potential to trigger asthma and allergies. Number eight, anxiety and stress. Have you ever been stressed out over a bug? Yeah, it seems a bit funny. Unless, of course, you've got a major infestation. Bedbugs and cockroaches can increase your stress and anxiety levels for the following reasons. They're difficult to spot. This can make you paranoid. They're annoying, and they invade your personal space. They're not easy to kill. And finally, once you've won the battle, you still have to consider the war. Bedbugs and cockroaches can come back. Number nine, when are they most active? We know that bedbugs and cockroaches are nocturnal, but are they seasonal? To a certain degree, the answer is yes, with degree being the key word. Bedbugs and cockroaches love warm and humid weather. They feed more, produce more, and grow faster. This is why any type of infestation tends to get worse during those summer months. Bedbugs are hard to eliminate for one simple fact. Bedbugs can't fall for bait as they feed on blood. While you can set up a variety of bedbug traps, they're not as easy to entice as cockroaches. Because cockroaches feed on regular food, they can easily be baited, trapped, and killed. Glucose bait traps are a prime example. One of the best ways to eliminate both pests at the same time is through heat. Raising the indoor temperature to over 120 degrees will do the trick. Of course, this requires specialists, some very unique equipment, and proper prep as to eliminate all exit routes. Both bedbugs and cockroaches can also be killed with pesticides, although bedbugs are a little more difficult due to their size. We advise you to contact your local pest control service if you are dealing with a single issue or a combination of both. Professionals will not only be able to treat your living space, but also help you to take the proper measures to prevent a recurrence. Killing the eggs is ground zero. 
And on that final note, that will conclude things for this video. We hope you found the material informative and beneficial as it relates to your current and future needs. If you would like to see similar content on the subject of bed bugs, we encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Whether you're watching us now from bedbugsinsider.com or directly from our YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button and join the community. We produce fresh content on a regular basis. It's that time again. You got it. Question time. Do you have a bed bug infestation? What about a cockroach problem? And yikes, what about both? If you are currently in the midst of the storm, what are you doing to rid your home of these unwanted guests? Has this been an issue in the past, but is no more? If so, what did you do to win the fight? Regardless of your current situation, please share your story and input in the comments section below. What you have to offer could help others who are seeking answers while dealing with this awful in-home ordeal. Until our paths cross again, we thank you so much for watching. We wish you all the best, and we hope you have a wonderful day.